GoPro-inspired image stabilization, sleek and stylish design and promises for great performance at a bargain price. Is Infinix 040 that good? Let's inspect! This, my dear friends, is called the 040 5G. And I say the 5G because there's also a non-5G version with a weaker hardware, not as cool as this one. This comes from Infinix, yet one more model where you kind of want to gate and buy it even before knowing how it performs in reality because of the partnership with GoPro and JBL in order to tune some of the parameters and also the pretty awesomely sounding front camera because 4K at 60 frames per second sounds like quite a big deal and also a lot of other great specifications on theory and this is why we're here in order to explore everything to figure out where are the corners cut if any and how much all these promises are matching the actual real life performance and of course to have some fun and to explore more cool tech because this is what i do here nice to meet you i'm the tech mishka time to go let's go for exploring the design and the build quality by focusing on the display first it is one of these phones that come with curved glass display. You either like it or not. Definitely, this decision makes replacing or repairing the display more challenging, but undeniably it makes the phone feel slimmer. Not that this one is bulky anyway, quite the opposite, just 7.9mm thickness and it is one of the slimmest phones with such a large battery inside. You can grab one with a different color, of course. Good news is that Infinix matched the color of the protector as well. In fact, part of the assembly, and hereby I offer you a short extraction out of the unboxing, we get not only a rear protective cover, but also a screen protector, which fits perfectly well if you have the patience to correctly place it on the top. If you plan doing so, make sure it is right at the start before you actually use the phone in order to get this perfect fit. If you decide to skip this step, well, Grill Glass 5 takes care about preventing from scratches and cracks. The brightness is very decent for a mid-ranger and Infinix call it Flexible AMOLED. It is LTPS, meaning that it can switch between a few refresh rates, 60Hz being the lowest and 144Hz being the highest. The pulse width modulation is surprisingly high as well, and this is quite important because some people are sensitive to lower values. Infinix claimed that it reaches frequency of more than 2300 Hz, according to my tools, not as much, but still excellent. The back of the phone is plastic, but feels like frosty glass, so well done. Perhaps something that will easily take scratches, though. The phone is IP54 splash resistant, so make sure to never drop it in the pool. All the control buttons are on the right side. No headphone jack, but you can of course use the Type-C to 3.5mm adapter if needed. And of course, the most remarkable part on the back fits within this big circular area. The camera setup is fairly interesting. The main one is fine, backed by the Samsung HM608 megapixel image sensor. It is the same as what we have with Xiaomi 12T and Redmi Note 13. It is good, but not spectacular. Daytime photos are well balanced about contrast and texture. Colors are good, no issues with the white balance, exactly as I hope to see it working. At night, the optical image stabilization certainly helps a lot and most of the shots will look fine and with a bit of help from the AI processing, the results are close to excellent. In some cases, not too far away from the quality of flagships that cost nearly a few times more than the 040 itself. The ultra-wide camera is also well usable. I'd stay away from nighttime photos captured with it, but for sunny days, it is a good match. I guess here the big focus is on the front camera because most of the smartphone vendors deploy a basic image sensor there, yet often capable of Ultra HD resolution just in order to say that it can record in 4K. Infinix go one step further and add the ISOCELL JN1 image sensor by Samsung, something that a couple of years ago was backing the main camera setups for phones such as Redmi 12, Nubia Neo 2 and so on. And not only it can record in 4K resolution, Video frame rate goes as high as 60p. 
The interesting area about the phone is the video stabilization, because for the main, the ultra-wide and the front camera, you're gonna notice that in some resolution the stabilization can be set to Ultra Steady Pro, which, okay, funny name, but in some cases it is close to the effectiveness of the latest GoPro action cameras. A side-by-side -side comparison is of course interesting about the ultra-wide shooters. So, 4K up to 60 frames per second and pretty solid image stabilization. It's all electronic based, but given the good image sensor and the powerful processor, I, I think that's a pretty decent tool for vlogging. And you already have a chance to try out how it feels and also rate the microphone quality because I'm outdoors and today is pretty windy. If you wonder what the other two camera-like things are doing, well, one of them is the depth sensor and the other one is the LED. And there also is this tiny infrared port implemented. Pretty nice. Hats down to Infinix about fitting in as much good hardware as possible. In a matter of fact, since we talk about good hardware, the phone is backed by Dimensity 8200 Ultra, which gives 040 the edge when comparing side by side with competitors at prices below $450. One of the few more beefed phones I can think of right now is the Poco X6 Pro, but the cameras there are not on par with the quality over here. Stressing the CPU to its maximum shows rather good thermal dissipation. There have been some ups and downs, but nothing critical. And here's a fun fact. On theory, the Tensor G4, which powers the latest Pixel 9 series, has superior specs, but in reality, the CPU inside 040 has better sustained performance, especially when it comes to gaming or long-lasting CPU-intensive tasks. Regardless of benchmarks, or daily tasks or stressful for the system challenges such as video editing and gaming, 040 seems to keep its cool and performance is about right. If you're more concerned about the tech details, which you will anyway find in most of the other reviews, there are loads of RAM, a lot of storage, triple camera setup on the rear, high-res audio tuned by JBL, a 5000 mAh battery which can even be recharged wirelessly, FM radio, fingerprint sensor, proximity sensor and weight of the phone is around 195 grams. Yeah, that's a really bright sounding list with specifications. Uh, kind of unexpected, uh, unexpected because of the price point of the Infinix 040 5G, remember? The processor inside is a very nice surprise because it's the Dimensity 8200 Ultra, which is just below the flagship line of MediaTek, meaning exceptionally good performance at a very good price, very good thermal characteristics, very good match to people who plan to edit a lot of content and videos on the go using the smartphone. So apparently Infinix go big about the specs with 045G. The battery, for example, 5000 mAh, and yet the phone is so slim. Charging is as fast as 45 watts, and this here must become a standard Android feature for everyone. Infinix give you the choice about how quickly the battery is going to be recharged. And now, let me give you a tip about adding some emotions to this charging process. The sponsor of this video, Pixel Cable Pro, which is the first 240 watt capable fast charging app controlled cable on the market and promises to redefine your charging experience. Comes with OLED display and ability to add custom animations while you charge your device. It will definitely help me a lot in the future as well while testing smartphones because it can measure the power input and confirms the promised 45 watts by Infinix. Inside the smartphone app, you can conveniently choose among various animations, texts and stats to be shown, and it is supported by iOS and Android phones both. So hurry up, open the link to Pixel Cable Pro from the video description, reserve yours and get used to a completely new experience while charging. The 040 can also receive power wirelessly and supports reverse charging, so pretty decent so far. If only the power consumption was a bit more efficient, because it feels more like average. According to reports, up to 5 hours of gaming and 8 hours of heavy use, but it very much depends on the screen brightness, the CPU load and so on. To put it in simple words, 
The battery life, when heavily used, is superior compared to Samsung-made chipsets due to the more efficient CPU architecture here, but standby times are not superb due to the rather heavyweight OS pack which is the next thing I want to showcase. If you like a lot of customizations, this could be the real deal. Inbuilt call recording feature, Infinix homegrown smart assistant, some AI functions, app cloning, themes engine, you can find a lot of little treasures that will enhance your productivity and are not to be found with certain competitive products. At the same time, the so-called XOS, which at the time of launch is based on the current Android 14, feels surprisingly lightweight, something that I never got to sense with Xiaomi's Hyper OS, for instance. If you prefer slimlined and bloat-free environment, this may annoy you at the start, however, because there are a bunch of unwanted pre-installed third-party apps, so you can spend some time de-bloating. This is where the GoPro Quick app also belongs together with certain integrations inside the camera app, which is pretty nice and helpful. Infinix promised regular updates up until Android 16 and three years of security patches, which is a very modest promise given the steps up made by the competition. I'm pretty happy with the connectivity side, problem-free phone calls, super stable reception, even better than my current Galaxy S24, and there's a physical proximity sensor for accurately detecting the presence of your ear in order to shut the screen off while you're talking. Saying this because of the struggles that some people have with other brands deploying just a virtual one. There's fast Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, we mentioned that 040 can be a fully functional remote for most of your home appliances thanks to infrared blaster. Oh, and you know what? I should have shown you this much earlier. Yeah, the audio experience is so good. JBL tuned, powerful stereo sound, high res audio, excellent for multimedia. If audio quality is a priority to you, then 040 nails that category. Now, let's not make one more of these reviews on YouTube that give you the feeling about too good to be true, because you can still find certain things to complain about. There is no micro SD card slot, for instance. The USB transfer speeds are according to the 2.0 specifications. The water resistance is subpar. The screen repairs would be challenging and expensive. And there's a bit of bloatware when it comes to the software side. If I may summarize it thus far, uh, I feel that uh, the 045G somewhat remains under the radar, most likely because Infinix as a brand is not that present in North America or, or Europe but it seems to provide fantastic value ratio. Because if this smartphone is present in the country where you live and is on your shortlist, I would very much recommend it because of the excellent performance, because of the pretty good camera setup at this price point, the very good working battery, the quick charging and all these features that we have explored together. I think the hardware for the money asked is spectacular question marks are around the software, because yes, you do have bloatware, at least we know that there would be three years of software updates, hopefully something that Infinix is going to decide extending at some point. So yeah, if that's on your shortlist, definitely I think it's a smartphone worth checking and worth considering. Well, if you want to get to know more about it, check the video description for more information, of course, for a link to buy the phone or anything else so that you can support my work here on the channel without paying anything extra from your end. So that's everything about this episode. Thank you very much for watching it. I'm the Tech Mishka, invite you to subscribe for more cool tech inspections and can't wait to see you in the next one. Bye.